I remembered seeing them on Mike Douglas or Merv Griffin's show, and uh, and they blew my mind. I, I thought these are two. They were about two years younger than me, and uh, where they were musically was so far advanced that they um, they really humbled me. And so I said, you know, I got to Los Angeles. I'd sure love to meet those guys. And luckily, one of my first friends that I made in L.A., Peter Atanasoff was very good friends with them. He says, you got to meet my buddies Tom, Tommy and John Keane. And I, I met them in, uh, right off the bat when I moved to L.A., and they became two of my closest friends. Very good musicians. Yeah, well, it was actually... You know what's funny is that that album uh, came after we had... Uh, we had a bunch of hits after I'd joined the group. You know, I'd sang a couple. Bill was featured a lot, you know, with Look Away and I Don't Want to Live Without Your Love. And, and uh, so we we sort of created our, uh, you know, our portion of the Chicago legacy. Um, and um, Stone of Sisyphus uh, was an album that we were trying to make that, uh that was our statement and not it's funny because what I, what I said to you uh, at first when we sat down it was taking all of the motives away from I gotta make a hit I gotta you know use uh, outside writers material and so we went and made Stone of Sisyphus and um, you know as you probably know the record label wasn't thrilled with the fact they weren't involved in it um, during the making of it and Plus, a lot of political stuff was going on where um, Warner Brothers was going through a big change and letting some some of their top uh, executives go. And we, um, so in a sense, I, it was the beginning of that spirit that I'm talking about right now of making music for the right reasons. Um, you know, and and I have to also say that Chicago '17. I wasn't there for that, but I was there for '18 and '19 and '21. And I'm not saying that we weren't making music for the right reasons. We were all writing music from our hearts, and but it was really focused into trying to stay on the radio and make hits. Which, you know, what a great problem to have. You know, I I don't, um, you know, I don't regret any of those years or those experiences. I had a great time. So. You know, Stone of Sisyphus. Um, I'm just glad it finally got to see the light of day. And what's interesting is that you know I told you I didn't want to make CDs anymore. However, touring Europe has really motivated me and uh, inspired me because I, uh, and this may sound kind of cliche, but it's really really the truth. I'm 46 years old now. And, I've got a family, I've got kids who are uh, growing up and, and in this world where things are changing so fast and, uh, and we need to mend relationships, uh, you know, as Americans. And I see the, the, um, the attitude and, and uh, spirit of, of the world out here wanting to come together. I'm actually getting motivated to make a CD. So, um, not not to like say that it's well. Once again, I'm not going to put any parameters on it. And say it's going to be a political CD or, or have those statements or anything. But I am looking at people in general and seeing that there is a. I think that there is a real spirit of of knowing that we need to really come together and understand each other. And so I talked to Peter Wolf, who produced Stone of Sisyphus, actually yesterday, and told him I said I want to sit down with you when I get home because. I think it might be time to actually make a CD. Yeah, another Jason, Jason record, so.